Hello students, today we are going to discuss one of the important and probable histology slide that is of the duodenum. As all of you know better that <coughs> duodenum is the part of the first part of the small intestine. The meaning of the duodenum, the, uh, the protocol of our histology is that we see the introductory part that is anatomical importance then actual histology and some clinical anatomy points and along with that the uh, diagram, diagram that informs the some uh, peculiarities of that particular histology slide for example the villi microvilli and uh, whatever the differentiating point other that differentiate the digestive system other parts from the duodenum okay now this duodenum the meaning of the duodenum duodenum is the first part of the small intestine the length of the duodenum it starts from the pylorus and it ends at the duodenum jejunum jejunal junction where from the jejunum starts uh, the total length of the duodenum is 12 centimeters that means 12 uh, 25 centimeters and the it is also called as a it measures around 12 fingers and it is english letter c so in which the pancreas is located pancreas is located so duodenum the word means the the that is uh dectulos means 12 fingers it is the shortest and widest part of the small intestine it extends the first uh, it is divided into first part second part third part and fourth part the first part is uh, around 5 cm second part 7.5 third part is the longest part 10 cm and fourth one is the shortest 2 to 3 cm so it is like this backward upward second part third part and fourth part fourth part is the short so in the second part of the duodenum the uh, pancreatic duct and the bile duct opens as all of you know better pancreatic artery uh, that duodenum uh, the gastroduodenal artery that supplies to the superior and inferior that supplies to the duodenum and uh, that duodenal ulcer is the main important entity uh, regarding the clinical anatomy of the duodenum now the actual uh, study uh, it, it consists of the numerous villi in the mucous membrane the structure transfer section or ts of the duodenum shows following different things first of all the mucosa mucosa of the stomach we have seen the mucosa is innermost layer of the duodenum lined by simple columnar epithelium with five microvilli at its tip. Few mucus secreting goblet cells are also present in surface epithelium. Here the mucosa is thrown into minute finger-like projection called as a villi. Villi is the main important peculiarity of the microscopic structure uh, or even that of the duodenum. Villi help in increasing the surface area. If you stretch the duodenum, the sur total surface area due to the presence of the villi uh, the total surface area in increased by this presence of the villi. Typical villi is lined by the surface epithelium and lamina propria projecting into it. It contains loose areolar connective tissue and a central core of lymphatics called as a lactea. Now, just below the mucosa, there exists lamina propria containing simple tubular intestinal glands which open into the crypts of villi and are called as the crypts of that leberkin leberkin then the crypts of the leberkin consist of the following types of cells stem cells first of all the stem cell these are undifferentiated cells undergoing continuous mitotic cell division which migrates eventually replaces the old surface epithelium thus forming the enterocytes 
go blood cells they secrete mucus now that uh, inter endocrine cells they also that uh, adrenergic cells they belong to the apud cell system and secrete local hormones such as the secretin cell system and secrete local hormone such as secretin cholecystokinin pancreatinin that stands for apud what is meaning of it? we have discussed two to three times that apud it stands for amino precursor uptake d car carbo xylen okay this is apud that pinnate cells they also called as a gymogenic cells they are rich in zinc and zymogen granules in it they produce the digestive enzymes and lysosomes that is antibacterial agents now muscularis first one we have seen the mucus layer then the muscular coat that muscular coat is seen below the lamina propria and made up of a thin layer disrupted circular muscle fibers the submucosa submucosa it contains loose areolar connective tissue with numerous mucus secreting duodenal glands called as a brunner's gland then the they secrete brunner's gland secrete the alkaline fluid rich in bicarbonate combined secretion of brunner's gland and intestinal glands is called as a succinctricus you know better the many important function of the small intestine to secrete the succinctricus muscularis externa now the muscular layer the outermost layer muscularis externa uh, it is not outermost there is a serosa peritoneum most outside the it is the muscular coat made up of the inner circular and outer lobster very common then it, uh, it in between two muscle layers few parasympathetic ganglionic cell of mesenteric fluxus can be seen now the serosa it is outermost layer made up of a connective tissue cells uh, adipocytes and a few blood vessels it is also blended in visceral peritoneum main important functions of the duodenum villi of duodenum mucosa absorption in function and they also increase the surface area of absorption brunner's glands present in submucosa secrete alkaline intestinal fluid helping in digestion muscularis externa propria and food forwarded by producing powerful contraction that is due to the peristalsis peristaltic movement is there serosa is supportive and protective in function so serosa is nothing but the visceral peritoneum now the important clinical anatomy important clinical anatomy of the duodenum as all of you know the duodenum mainly duodenum mainly consist of three layers the first one the important that anatomical description you have to make one diagram that firstly you have to show the villi villi uh, there are also villi in the jejunum but the villi are little bit differ uh, than the duodenum and stretchable the most stretchable uh, the surface area to increase the surface area of the interior of the duodenum is due to that villi the protocol is some anatomical discussion actual histology and some additional clinical anatomy point and one diagram the diagram which is given above to you and you know the diagram in the diagram you have to show the mucous membrane the submucosa that muscular coating and serosa serosa outermost layer you know it is made by the peritoneum okay now the clinical anatomy points duodenum is a common site of the ulcers called as a duodenal ulcers it may be produced by its uh, own secretion that is succus enterocus succus enterocus uh, a two mark question may be asked what is the blood supply of the duodenum that is gastro duodenal branches of the gastro duodenal artery left gastric artery branches of the left gastric artery supplies to the duodenum 
then what is the length of the duodenum the total length of the duodenum is 25 centimeters or 12 fingers okay and this short note duodenum may be asked as a long answer question as a 20 marks question so many points but just uh, don't uh, uh, intermingle during writing if histology is being asked write down histology mainly the uh, first headlines of the anatomical description uh, duodenum is the first part of the small intestine it is 12 centimeters uh, 25 centimeters long 12 fingers um, blood supply four to five points you just add uh, you may draw uh, anatomical diagram and separate histological diagram histological diagram is important in the histology you may mention uh, four parts of the duodenum and may, may mention the lengths of the each of the part but main important diagram in the histology is the histological diagram and add the two to three uh, that uh, clinical anatomy point regarding the duodenum so duodenum is one of the important part of the small intestine and uh, many times it is asked as a histology of the duodenum now the uh, differentiating point you may mention the differentiating point of the duodenum and jejunum ileum the differentiating points are the villi differentiating point in the in relation with the uh, other part that is uh, villi interior of the duodenum and the differentiating points are there uh, the lumen walls interior mesentery blood supply lymphatic drainage a comparison between the jejunum ileum and duodenum with other parts uh, that is jejunum with the other parts of the small intestine a comparison okay then the uh, second ha huh. second histology slide is belonging to the respiratory system only one is there uh, very less the trachea is being asked uh, but it may be asked the histology of the lungs histology of the lungs you know better the histology of the lungs uh, before description of the histology of the lungs See, lungs are two respiratory organs. Lungs are respiratory organs. Uh, there are two lungs. One is the right lung and left lung. They are conical in shape. They have base, apex, medial surface, lateral surface. Then it has a root to pass the uh, that uh, bronchus. Then the uh, arteries in it. Uh, the veins comes out the uh, pulmonary arteries veins comes out uh, blood supply is the bronchial artery uh, branch of the uh, that vertebral artery supplies to the lungs and uh, lung has right lung has two fissures left has one fissure the weight uh, it is 50 gram more um, uh, uh, right lung is 700 grams and left lung is 650 grams so it, they are situated in the thorax such a anatomical points you have to mention the extent vertebral extent you may mention you may mention uh, the extent of the ribs in relation and medial surface and in between two lung there is a heart such a things you may mention you may mention surfaces you may mention the borders uh, you, the, there are lateral surface there is a, a, a medial surface base apex and inferiorly the inferior surface is there called as a base and apex the medial surface consists of the root through which resting enter into the lung and comes out that is root of the lung ilum or that root of the lung 
so you may compare a left lung has only one fissure so comparison there is a uh, comparison of uh, the impression of the arch of aorta on the left lung on the medial surface of the left lung uh, and uh, mm, there is a cardiac notch to the left lung cardiac notch is there mm, these are the important features uh, of the right and left lung lungs are the respiratory organs now the actual histology what you see the structure and functional unit of the lung is a alveoli here actual gases exchange takes place so in the lungs a slight identification that uh, has been uh, given above the diagram of the you may mean uh, draw the diagram of the lung alveoli see the lungs photograph and diagrammatic representation lungs are covered by the flora as a uh, that visceral flora and parietal flora and in between them there is a uh, fluid fluid and that is the outermost layer so it consists of the serosa there may be bronchial respiratory bronchial is there and lung alveol alveoli and the interiorly there is a alveolar sac where actually gases exchange takes place and the intrapulmonary bronchus these are the main important features of the uh, histology of the lung now see the histology of the lung shows the bronchial tree as as all of you know the right bronchus and left bronchus right and left bronchus they enter into the lung they are like a tree this is the like a tree the primary bronchial secondary bronchial and tertiary bronchial they further divide and they are called as a lung alveoli and alveolar sacs single bronchus primary bronchus secondary bronchial and tertiary bronchial and then dividation so you may draw that separate diagram of the bronchial tree you may mention the bronchial tree in the another diagram other than the histology you may mention the bronchial tree and show primary secondary and tertiary the weight fissures borders base apex uh, then the uh, relations little bit relations uh, in a short as a anatomical lungs are the respiratory organs such a anatomical description you have to mention then the actual actual histology you have to trace more on the actual histology rather than the anatomical just a headlines of the anatomical importance you have to write okay now the bronchial tree it consists of the branches of the bronchus that is primary secondary and terminal division of the bronchus lobular terminal and respiratory bronchus these are the branches suppose this is a bronch uh, that bronchus primary secondary tertiary and the terminal and respiratory bronchus and lastly lung alveoli and air sacs air sac that is structural and functional unit of the lung where actual gases exchange takes place okay now this bronchus and its branches are recognized by its characteristic four layers mucosa see bronchus and its branches has a histology interiorly there is a mucosa sub mucosa cartilaginous layer and adventitia these are the four layers i again revise the bronchus bronchial tree has a histology from inside outward mucosa sub mucosa then then the cartilaginous layer and adventitia the outermost layer then whereas bronchioles are the further subdivisions of the smaller bronchi which consist of the layers of the bronchi with the lack of cartilaginous ring in it terminal bronchioles are rich in a special type of cells called as a clara cells terminal and respiratory bronchioles are made up of hello huh bolo ha bolo bolo
No thanks, madam. So, whereas the bronchioles are, uh, they are called as the clara cells. Now, the alveolus, lung alveola is a structural and functional unit of the lungs. So, alveolus is the structural and functional unit of the lung, which forms the end part of the bronchial tree. And alveolus, and alveolus is thin walled polyhedral sac like structure lined by a simple squamous epithelium. Here, the epithelium is a single layer which rests on basement membrane. Deep to the basement membrane, there is a delicate layer of a loose areolar connective tissue through which numerous pulmonary capillaries run around. Epithelial lining, the lung, the alveoli is called as a pneumocytes and a typical alveolus is lined by the following types of epithelial cells that is pneumocytes. Type 1, types of the pneumocytes. Type 1 cell, these are the nothing but a simple squamous epithelial cells uh, with flat nucleus at the center and they form a major part of the alveolar cell population. Types of the type 2 type of cells. These are modified simple squamous epithelial cells which form about 8 to 10 percent of total alveolar cells. They bear fine microvilli on their surface with an abundant secretory granule in its cytoplasm. Third type of the cell is they are very rare type of cells which, un which has a unknown functions. They are also called as a brush cells. Now the interalveolar alveolar septum. In between two alveoli there is a septum. This is a thin layer of a connective tissue found between the two alveoli. It is rich in numerous pulmonary capillaries, elastic fibers with a wide range of cells which include goblet cells, basal cells, mast cells, lymphocytes, serous cells, macrophages and that is Kulchitsky type of cells that is about the structure histological structure of the lung histological structure of the lung during the description you have to give the uh, that serous outside there is a serous that is the uh, covering of the lung that is flora both the flora that is serosa and in the interior, uh, there are branches of the uh, that bron uh, bronchus, primary bronchus. So all of these bronchus consist of the mucus, submucosa, and the outermost part of it, the outermost part of the bronchus is tunica adventitia. See mucosa, submucosa, cartilaginous, and tunica adventitia there. And secondly, lung alveoli. There is a septum. These are the things. They are important in the histological study or the histological point of view of the lungs. Histological point of view of the lungs. Okay. Now, the clinical in the clinical anatomy, the respiratory diseases syndrome. The that is first of all pneumonia, inflammation of the lungs. Then. Uh, Mm, heart failure cells may be formed in the lungs, emphysema, uh, then the tuberculosis of the lungs. There may be a formation of a, uh, that uh, in between visceral and parietal layers, the flora in between, there may be formation of a fluid, excessive, that is fluorescy. Lungs may suffer from many diseases, there may be contraction of the uh, bronchioles, small bronchioles and that leads to the pulmonary asthma. So these are some clinical anatomy points regarding the lung. I again revise the first of all anatomical anatomical differentiation two lungs are there, their weight, their surfaces, their borders, where they are situated, base, apex, that you have to mention the weight and other things. Interiorly the, uh, the lung has a root and you have to mention separately lung alveoli, histology of the lung alveoli and the bronchioles little bit separately.
okay and draw the diagram of a pulmonary tree as well as the uh, that microscopic structure of the lung showing the lung alveoli serosa and the interior lung alveoli there is a septum then the bronchioles small bronchioles their layers uh, the layer the cartilaginous layers uh, that adventitia mucous membrane of the that uh, bronchioles okay now some clinical three to four points you can mention now the next one the slide uh, next slide is of a ovary see ovary is one of the we have seen the testis and the second gonad that is to be asked in the examination is the uh, ovary is the ovary so ovaries are, are the gonadal organs they ovaries are there are two ovaries they are situated in the ovarian fossa of in the female ovarian fossa where, where ovaries are all in shape the name itself suggests the weight of the ovary is 4 to 5 grams and they are uh, suspended they are suspended by the ligaments the broad ligament and the, that utero ovarian ligament and they are suspended at the in the ovarian fossa of the female the important uh, they are pair reproductive organs mainly or you may say the gonad you know ovaries are responsible to send the ovum in the uterus for the fertilization and that uh, ovum goes on uh, ovary goes on some cyclical changes in it cyclical changes and the uh, very cyclical changes are there in the monthly cycle changes and one ohm is released from one of the ovary the weight of the ovary is 4 to 5 grams they are very small organs from which the ohm is being released either from one right ovary or from the left ovary so uh, it is oval uh, or almond shaped close to the they are situated near the fimbria the fimbria fimbria for the release of the releasing of the ohm and they are covered by broad ligament that is meso ovarian the peritoneum derived from the peritoneum the broad ligament and that connects it with the uterus so ovaries are oval in shape in short and they are situated in the ovarian fossa and weight is 4 to 5 they are, they are the anatomically important points regarding the ovary okay now the actual uh, see the diagram uh, above see the above diagram to know the actual histological structure in a cross section what structure that ovaries are covered by that serosa the outside there is a uh, peritoneum the general epithelium it is the outermost layer of the ovary lined by single layer of the simple cubital epithelium secondly the outer surface of germinal epithelium is continuous with the mesothelium of visceral peritoneum and inner surface of germinal epithelium rests on a layer of a dense irregular, irregular tissue called the tunica albuginea. Tunica, as all of you know, the layers of the testis like that, the outermost layer of the ovary is tunica albuginea. Note the term germinal epithelium is the that is misnomer here as unlike the germinal epithelium of testes it does not produce any germ cells the tunica albuginea of ovary is much thinner and less dense than the tunica albuginea of the testes tunica albuginea you have to differentiate the differentiating point also you have to mention about the testes in males the germinal epithelium or the tunica albuginea uh, is thick in testis and they, it is thin in the ovary. The cortex forms the major part of the ovary and lies just below the tunica albuginea. Now the stroma of the ovarian cortex is made up of the extensive network of reticular fibers 
few collagen fibers with a spindle like fibroblast called as a fusiform cells stroma is filled with the numerous coherent follicles of different stages and they are that is primordial follicle primary follicle secondary follicle tertiary follicle and corpus luteum corpus luteum is blue in color that is a one of the part of the ovary see first one is a primordial follicle these are the most numerous follicles located in the periphery of the ovarian cortex they are the smallest and the simplest structure made up of a primary primary oocytes and a single layer of the squamous follicular cells surrounding it primary follicles a primary single follicle is modified primordial follicle with following growth primary oocytes increase the increase in size oocytes are the structural the functional units of the ovary but it goes on cyclical changes secondly flattened squamous follicular cells become multi layered and rest on a thick basement membrane a layer of a glycoprotein that is zona pellucida separates primary oocyte from the follicular cells stroma of the ovarian cortex surrounding the primary follicle forms thicka folliculi secondary follicle secondary follicle it is also called as a antral follicle since it contains a crescentric space called as a antrum silent feature of a secondary follicle are oocytes increase in size formation of a antrum with liquor of folliculi thicka folliculi are differentiated into inner thicka interna and outer thicka externa now territory follicles it is the largest mature follicle of ovarian cortex also called graafian follicle the tertiary follicle third the graafian follicle are being formed the it is the largest mature follicle of ovarian cortex also called as a graafian follicle a typical mature graafian follicle contains following features first one contains primary oocyte surrounded by zona pellucida primary oocyte is protected by single layer of a granulosa cells forming cor corona radiata which is which in turn is surrounded by a huge mass of cells called as a cumulus ophorus large antrum containing liquor of folliculi protruded by cumulus sifra uh, that is sifrous a multi layered cells lining the wall of the antrum antrum forming membrane granulosa a inner thicka interna rich in blood vessels and uh, estrogen secreting gland surrounded by outer thicka externa made up of a fibrous connective tissue then the corpus luteum corpus luteum is one of the important part of the ovary which is yellow in color and if ovum is fail to unite with the sperm the yellow color that sees in the result tube of the menses is corpus luteum so corpus luteum is formed by the ovulation stages from the ovulated ruptured graafian follicle a uh, corpus luteum is collapsed highly folded and modified temporary endocrine gland membrana granulosa cells enlarge in size with an accumulation of a yellowish that is keratinoid pigment in it called as a lutein and such cells are called as a luteal cells thicka interna cells also undergo same modification same modification same modification uh, adding a cellular bulk 
corpus luteum starts secreting progesterone the main important function of the corpus luteum is to secrete the progesterone and it is yellow in color the with a small amount of a estrogen a fertilization has taken place if if and if only fertilization has taken place if not they turn into the degenerating form called as a corpus albicans corpus luteum to rupantar corpus albicans madhe hota corpus luteum yellow color cha asta fertilization jhalyanantar vegla ani the medulla we have seen outer serosa that is peritoneum we have seen the cortex now the medulla innermost layer of the ovary it is made up of the connective tissue rich in blood vessels elastic fibers and a smooth muscles also the main important functions of the ovary before ovulation thickal cell present thicka interna of the graphene follicle secrete estrogen which is responsible for the appearance of a secondary sexual characters in female after ovulation the luteal cells of the corpus luteum secrete the progesterone hormone and small amount of estrogen which maintain the pregnancy if fertilization has taken place if not it is passed along with the menses so uh, some important uh, inflammation of the ovary inflammation of the ovary is called as a ophritis and ovary is a common site see the clinical anatomy ophritis common site of the cyst formation and that is the reason of the infertility in female sreela mula ka hot nahi tacha mukhya karan bare sreya madhe ovary cyst yes that cyst do not allow to release the ovum into the follicular tube ovarian cyst multiple grape like cysts are there and there may be inflammation in the pelvis that leads to the inflammation inflammation of the ovary is called as ophritis and ovarian cysts are very common disorders in the clinical anatomy of the ovary ovaries are supplied by the ovarian arteries they are the branches of the abdominal aorta gonadal arteries in female and testicular ovarian artery in female and testicular artery in male so that is about the blood supply clinical anatomy and main important is the histology uh, that uh, anatomical uh, see the diagram you you may sketch a diagram of a ovary you may show uh, the various stages of development of uh, graphene follicles and the corpus luteum a germinal layer the from outer the germinal layer that is uh, tunica albuginea you may describe cortex and you may describe the medulla certain changes takes place in the according to the menstrual cycle in the ovary you may show that diagram and a separate diagram of the uh, ovary histological structure starting from the serosa that is of the peritoneum you may draw two diagrams in this particular uh, slide uh, or particular histology now see uh, the another histology slide or is of a nerve cell nerve cell that is a whole the whole of the nervous system is made by a by a single structural and functional unit of the nervous system is the neuron neuron may be as or nerve cell may be as as a histology structure of the nerve cell so first one see the diagram of a nerve cell or a neuron in the neuron is the structural and functional unit of the nerve cell centrally there is a nucleus and the cytoplasm and it has two processes one is the exon exon see 
during when development after the birth the axon around the axon there develops a sheath called as a myelin sheath so unless and until the nerves are myelinated and to the body cell body has a processes called as a dendrites 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 are there and axon axon is covered by sheath called as a myelin sheath and this myelin sheath is not there in whole of the length of the axon axon it is little bit interrupted in between and that is called as a that nodes of the ranvia ranvia so it is little bit interrupted and see non myelinated nerve fibers has no that much control and it it has no control control is not there unless and until there is a myelination of a nerve cells so centrally there is a nucleus the golgi apparatus the mitochondria nerve cell is a structural and functional unit of the nervous system so that you you have to draw a single diagram of a nerve cell showing the central nucleus cell body and the process called as the axon covered by myelin sheath nodes of ranvia and dendrites these are the main important filaments or the a parts of the examination of a nerve cell see the diagram and write down the it receives sensory nerves and motor nerves sensory nerves and motor nerves that transmit the impulses towards the uh, that sensory nerve transmit the impulses towards the central nervous system and motor gives the order so nervous system neuron is a structural and functional unit of the nervous system neuron and that is nerve cell and its parts so there are various types of nerve cells uh, three to four types so that is mentioned in the uh, that uh, uh, in the uh, physiology book the nerve cell has been mentioned in the book of the physiology see the nervous tissue that, that is mainly ectoderm in origin the neuron or nerve cell is a structural and functional unit the another type of nervous cells is a neurogial neuroglial cells the cytoplasm of nerve cell is called as a exoplasm and covered by tubular sheath called as a exolemma the neuron is structural and functional unit a mature neuron has no capacity of regeneration see most important thing regarding the nervous system has no power to regenerate once the neuron is damaged it is not everywhere in our body has a regeneration kutlai ba damage jala ki parat tayar hot par nervous system ekda nerve cell tutli kiti parat tayar hot nahi okay now the neuron it is a long slender cylindrical structure and many projections on either side of the tip the typical neuron has a head called as a cyton and the long part is called as a axon cyton has a cell body soma or perikaryum see the body has a dendrites it has a uh, nissi granules it has a centrally there is a nucleus and uh, neurulema that is then the myelin sheath and nodes node of ranvia we have already seen in the practical i have shown you the slide of the neuron where node of ranvia gap what is node of ranvia is a gap then the uh, telidendria with terminal buttons at the end or axon continuous as a telidendria as a buttons then the axon is one of the longest cytoplasmic extension cells of the body that 
then axon hillock is a junction where the cyton is differentiated into axon axons are surrounded by a special type of cells called as a squan cells these cells secrete phospholipids which encircle around with the axon forming the myelin sheath myelin sheath surrounding axon acts like a insulator to absorb the shock and help in conduction of a nerve impulses more faster in between the two squamous cells there is a small interval space which appears like a node called as a node of ranvier then the axon terminals there are terminal buttons axon see in the diagram the cell body has a dendrites and axon continuous with the that uh, <coughs> telidendrite buttons telidendrite buttons are there to the axon axon is covered by the myelin sheath so neuroglia is also one of the type of nerve cell but this is modified connective tissue of cells from the central nervous system it is converted or modified in neuron is called as a neuroglia then the astrocytes are there microglia is there epidermal cells are there and the oligodendrocytes are also there these are nothing but the modified neuron cells of the central nervous system okay the once the nerve cell is damaged it is never generated there is no regeneration power of the in the neuron neuron is not regenerated okay inflammation of this nerve is called as a neuritis neuralgia pain from the nerve is neuralgia the pains from the nerve so these are the important histology see uh, this nerve cell may be asked rarely this is generally it is not asked but still if it is asked you are already <coughs> prepared it from the physiology you just have to draw a diagram of a uh, various types of the uh, nerve cells various types of the nerve cells you may uh, draw the peripheral nerve and then the sympathetic ganglion spinal ganglion uh, this uh, various types but just uh, about the fundamental structure of a neuron or nerve cell you must know okay uh, another commonly asked structural uh, the histology slide is a uh, the histology of the skeletal muscle see uh, <clears throat> in the physiology the muscles are being classified into uh, voluntary and involuntary but anatomical classification of the muscle is different they are they have the stations they have the stations some muscles are straighted and some muscles are non straighted they have the stations according to the uh, anatomy and according to the physiology voluntary and involuntary muscles the smooth muscles cardiac muscles they are involuntary and skeletal muscles are voluntary very simple in the physiology but structurally histologically if there is the stations they are straighted muscles okay now the skeletal muscles skeletal muscles the muscles which are attached to the bone or bone skeleton is a skeletal muscle they are under control of a will so that is a classification now you have to give the uh, history of the skeletal muscle as all of you know the skeletal muscle has some properties you may, you may mention some properties that is excitability and uh, first one is excitability and contracticity as all of you know the main important part they may get by stimulus external stimulus the muscles are stimulated by central nervous system or outward stimulation may be there to contract and relax like that the uh, involuntary muscles smooth muscles muscles of the intestine they are not uh, externally stimulated uh, cardiac muscles are uh, uh, 
external stimulation uh, they they cannot be stimulated uh, they uh, it is very difficult to stimulate them the the excitability there is the excitability in them uh, now the excitatory contacticity uh, the refractive period tonicity conductivity uh, all all or none law these are the some characters of this properties of the skeletal muscle like that cardiac muscle has a rhythmicity property so in the uh, primary introduction skeletal muscles are voluntary muscles they have stresses and excitability contacticity conductivity uh, uh, tonicity uh, refractive period these are the some characters of the skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle has a special property called as a the contact and relax contact and relax rhythmically that is main important property of the cardiac muscle and peristalsis moment is main important character of the smooth muscle that is of the muscles of the intestine okay now this see the diagram diagram of the skeletal muscle and the histology of the skeletal muscle histology of the skeletal muscle see main important characters of the histology of the skeletal muscle these muscles are numerous stations and strips on the surface hence they are being referred as a stripped or stated muscles in a longitudinal section of a skeletal muscle can explain under following headings main important characters of the histology of the skeletal muscle muscle fibers it is a long cylindrical fiber like structure which runs in parallel with other muscle fibers forming a bundle or a fasciculi in between the muscle fibers there is a thin layer of a connective tissue with maintain with a minute blood vessels and nerves running along their course a skeletal muscle fibers is highly variable in its measurements length of it may vary from a few micrometer to 35 cm as in case of a sartorius muscle the width from the 10 to 100 mm alternate dark and light bands are seen on the surface of a skeletal muscle fiber which are most striking feature of it nucleus of a muscle fiber is long flat which is seen peripherally just beneath the the sarcolemma whereas sarcoplasm of the cell contains numerous minute thread like structures called as a microfibrils see these microfibrils the microfibril is a part of a muscle fiber seen in sarcoplasm of the muscle cell typical microfibril is long elongated cylindrical structure with altered dark and light bands on it here the dark band is known as a band and light band is known as a uh, i band and the dark band is known as a a band band has a narrow lighter area middle which is in the form of a edge zone m line is seen in the middle of the edge zone which indicates the middle part of the myosin filament similarly the band is also equally divided into line called as a z line then the sarcomere it is the area found in z line of the myofibril and it is structure and function unit of the muscle fiber that uh, is sarcomere then the main important function of the skeletal muscle is the locomotion and secondly the storehouse of the glycogen and it acts as a store of a calcium they are under control of our will and they are voluntary you may say voluntary and they have stations so see the diagram and micro of fibril describe about the microfibril that structure in the inside the uh, muscle cells the myofibril then the light band nucleus sarcoplasm dark band and sarcolemma these are important characteristics of the histology cellular histology of the skeletal muscles then uh, uh, the nerve 
that stimulate to the muscle fiber outside stimulation is given by the uh, from the motor nerves that stimulate the muscle fibers and they get contact and relax contracted and relaxed as all of you must have studied in the properties of the skeletal muscle fibers you must have <coughs> experience in the skeletal muscles uh, dysfunctioning of the skeletal muscle is called as a uh, paralysis if the muscle is not stimulated they get fatigued sometimes they get fatigued and it is a main important storehouse of the glycogen uh, if the nerve stimulation is failed neuromuscular junction the muscle whole of the muscle get paralyzed it cannot be stimulated and day by day there is a physiological atrophy there are number of uh, disorders in the clinical anatomy uh, the uh, muscle goes on to physiologically muscle atrophies as the age advances but due to some uh, disease the muscle get atrophied by secondary etiology sec uh, the etiology etiology there is a some etiology in which there is a, uh, a physiological atrophy of the skeletal muscle and it is a main storehouse of a glycogen which may be converted into glucose okay it is main of the store and it is a power the motor power for contraction and relaxation and it is a main important for the locomotion skeletal muscle also helps in the respiratory process respiratory process locomotion so these are the some important clinical points so uh, you may mention the anatomical uh, voluntary involuntary stated non stated and describe the uh, that skeletal muscle fibers and myofibrils in it and characters of the myofibril in that so better that you mention all of these things in the skeletal muscle next time we'll see the cardiac muscle properties uh, with the um, histology of the cardiac muscle thank you